welcome, bienvenue, and welcome back to Opus Manu with Light. And today, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to go back to a couple of the puzzles that we've done before and get them down to the global record. Because we were just kind of guessing as to how good a solution could be when we first went through them. But now that I've beaten the story mode, I can look at the global record and go, oh, yeah, and think about the other solutions that I've done and work on getting towards that at least socially accepted minimum. So we're going to go over the hangover cure, the precision machine oil, and the health tonic. Each one was slightly less than optimal in different ways. So we're going to start with the hangover cure. We were one cycle shy. We were on 39. We thought it was great, but it wasn't quite there because, well, we hadn't learned about salting before binding. And so now we grab the thing, we salt it, we grab a thing, and we salt it, and then we grab a thing, put it in the middle. We already grabbed the salt early, we drag it and drop it. Et voila, we get ourselves our 38 cycle solution. The main reason we use the track is such that you can very quickly get the salt, uh, get the water onto the salt and onto the. Uh, bonder without having to worry about timing issues. It might be possible to do it with a smaller setup, but I like the symmetry of having these two on the sides and getting a nifty little fighter view out of it. So it's not hugely different from Cricket on Rails, but by doing the two sides and the salts early, we're able to get it done just one quick little cycle earlier. Okay, now precision machine oil, I had some minor issues with, um, because once again, we were a cycle short. We had down the line minus two at 28 cycles. Now we need 27, which is fine. And then we also, with Gastropod, with the 70 Gs, was not as cheap as possible. We have a good old 60 G solution here. Single arm on a track. Arm on a track is cheaper than a piston. And so here we are with a pretty decent solution. Uh, people were commenting in my comment section regarding the speed of Gastropod and how I could speed it up by swapping things. And that is likely very true. I don't yet work on optimizing the speed of small or cheap solutions or optimizing the size or cost of fast solutions. I will likely get to it, but I'm not there quite yet. When I do, I would like to set up a web page for tracking the, uh, the combined metrics of these solutions, but we'll get to that later. So nice cheap solution. We are at the top percentile. Ooh, I like that they changed it from global record to top percentile. Um, I like that. Ooh, we're still looking in here. Uh, so our previous solution with 28 cycles pulls it down the line. And that one goes wrong in the fact that it drops the lead onto the glyph. And sure, it gets picked up and moved right afterwards, but it turns out you don't actually have to drop the metal on the glyph. All you have to do is have it hovering over it when you drop the Quicksilver. And so with that knowledge in hand, we go to the no drop version where we grab it, we move it, and that one's fine. We bring the water into position, but when we grab the second lead, we don't drop it. We just pull it down the line. And so it gets done just that tiny bit faster. Every tiny thing that you can remove gets rid of one of those cycles and gets you from pretty darn good to that's what you really should have. And then with the health tonic, 
This one was a bit interesting because uh, what we were lacking was not speed. Because big arms thing, first thing I built, just gets the job done. It does exactly what needs to be done. You have Vitae moving here and then into the bin. You're not doing better than that. One iteration and you're done. However, this one is particularly tricky when it comes to cost and size. Well, maybe not cost and size. Cost is pretty darn simple. You have one arm, you leave it overlapping such that you can just attach it right there. But yeah, one short fixed arm, you're done. No problem. Size on the other hand, because I mean, 25 area is not 40. So, ski lift plus is to make it faster and cheaper, or faster, not cheaper. Um, then we have ski lift small. So let's look at the progression. We've got ski ski lift, which pulls it up, over, binds it, pulls it, and you're done. So it used a piston and a track and a piston. And we're like, well, we can do better than that. So we make it small. So instead of having three pieces of track, we just add another piston. It gets the same effect, less space. Okay, then we go, we can do better. And we make smaller, which just uses two pistons in a slightly different position. More or less the same solution. It was just changing how we achieved the degrees of freedom. And I was fairly confident with this one because we've only got those two unused hexes and two movers and shakers. But then we look at it and go, 15 area, we need 14 area. So what do we do? Well, we try to figure out where we can cut corners. We needed to get rid of that one last area. And so we cut it back down to just one piston on a tiny little track. So it took a little while for me to find because it it really bends your brain trying to think, well, what can I overlap with what? How can I keep this water from leaving where it starts? Because that's one of the keys to this is leaving this over top of where it starts for as long as possible. And so then we attach this Vitae push it out of the way. It's still on the entry. Then we rotate it. Now rotating it only added this one empty hex. Before we had two movers and shakers and two empty hexes. So by using just this one and not this one, we gain, well, we shave off that one area. And then we can work our way up, add our Vitae, and then push it into the bin. So by overlapping quite a bit with where it starts off, you gain a lot of real estate that, I mean, you've got those three spaces that you can use so long as the thing itself never leaves them. And I have a feeling that will come in really handy with some of the later puzzles where you've got just enormous inputs and enormous outputs, really. But it's all about making sure that you can overlap as much as possible because that's a lot of space that you could be using and if you don't use it you're probably wasting other space now i don't know if next episode will be coming back to the stamina potion which is by no means optimal because this thing is a beast or if we're going to push forward to uh the surrender flare which is also a beast. And as you can see, not yet optimal. So I will work on optimizing one or the other or both. Uh, you might not get an episode on Friday because I'm fairly busy on Thursdays. If you've got a particular choice on Surrender Flare or Stamina Potion, feel free to uh, let me know on Twitter or on Discord or in the comment section below. Also, if you have fancy solutions to anything really, feel free to leave those as well, and I will see you 
in the next episode of Opus Manu with light. <laughs>